Hello, everyone. Welcome to Energy First Golf. Energy First Impact Later. So today in this video, we're going to talk about, as you can see in the title, are you a left arm releaser or right arm releaser or both? Or what is important? So today we're going to talk about that. Now, we all know right now, when you downswing, really your left arm is called the lead arm. Now, of course, for a right-handed player, your right arm. I mean, for a left-handed player, your right arm, right? Now, um, but remember, energy first golf, what we're talking about is a correct golf instruction for amateurs, meaning someone who started playing golf after your muscles are fully developed. Understanding a correct system is extremely important, okay? And the truth is, I never understand why certain coaches would teach an adult to use their right arm in the very beginning. The idea is that your right arm is called the trail arm. Okay, if you feel like you're using your right arm to release through the ball, chance are really high percentage that you are just hitting the ball. So today we're going to talk about what's the difference between left arm release and a right arm release. Really not pros and cons, but rather what needs to know and what is the knowledge for right, left, or both. All right, so today we're going to talk about that. Lead on release. From Energy First Golf, the way how we teach is that every time when there's a beginner, really most amateurs came to me, doesn't matter if you have been playing golf for a while or you just picked up the club, I will always tell you that we need to learn you as a player need to learn how to release through the ball with your left arm because the left arm is more important, okay? And the right arm is not as important until you get to the stage where what we call the energy first golf, the third stage of learning golf, which is the spin and trajectory control stage, all right? So I'm going to grab a club. And we're going to talk about why left arm is so important for really anybody, amateurs that learn golf. Your left arm is like the propellers of the helicopter, the big one, the main one. And then your right arm is like the small one in the back. The right one actually controls what? The directions. And the engine, the rotor, which is your body. And that really is the best way to look at it. And also, if say right now, if I, me and you had doing a sort of like push cart competition in a grocery store, we go to Publix or Kroger's, that if it's two man team, whoever, whoever runs faster should be in the front that's pulling the push carts rather than the one who is faster that's pushing it. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, what about some of the cars that's Real, real drive where the engine's in the back. And chances are those cars are worth a lot of money. If you talk about where everything's more economical, more efficient, most cars nowadays is what? The engine's in the front. And it's front wheel drive. All right? So, lead on release, lead on rotation. Now we call it lead on release. Release and rotation is really the same thing. All right? So basically, we talked about when you get through the ball, your arms are rotating through the ball. You should never focus on try to square the club face to the ball. Really, if you're doing that, you are hitting a cut shot. We're going to talk about that a little bit in the later on in this video. But as you're getting through the ball, your lead arm's rotating. Your lead arm's rotating through the ball. And the important thing is that you have to relax this shoulder. If this shoulder's tense, or this arm is locked, there's no way you're able to rotate your lead arm. And the truth, the truth is, if you pay attention to a lot of tour players, their left arm on the downswing is in a, what I call the neutral flex. The reason why is that is because at this position, if your arms are neutral, you can have a supination of the wrist. But mind you, be very careful. The supination of the wrist cannot only, it cannot happen just Locally, it has to happen 
through your entire arm. And that's the reason why I always recommend a lot of amateurs do this particular exercise. It's what I call the entire arm rotation. You have to rotate your arms from your left arm from your shoulders to rotate. Okay? Because your shoulder, your this entire arm is connected to your body. And this body rotation is going to drag the arms down, which is, again, there is a lead arm abduction here. If your left shoulder is too tense, this supination of your wrist here, it's not going to happen. The truth is, when this is actually happening, you're turning, you have a turning feeling of the shoulders. And the chance are is when you're rotating your arms entirely. And think about it right now, if your arms are locked like this, you're going to have a hard time rotating your arms entirely. That's exactly the reason why understanding golf swing from inside out is so important. I know a lot of people will say, well, I have supination of the wrist here. But remember, this is not possible if you don't have a feeling coming from your rotator cuff. And if your rotator cuff is tense, and that's also impossible, it means you're not going to release your left arm. All right? So, we already know when you get through the ball, there's three movements that's going to happen with a, a golf club, which is your arm. So, we're going to talk about this. Here's a rip. Here's what I call the full rotation and full compression rip. And here's the block. Here's the block. And here's the cut. Here's the cut. It's not funny, as you can see, when I do with my lead on with the cut, it looks like a chicken wing. Right? And the truth is, a lot of times when you see a tour player, when they do hit a cut, it looks like this. Okay? Now, I always have a hard time understanding why certain instructors or even uh, Golf Channel, they always talk about how you got to learn to use your right hand in the early stage of learning golf, really for most amateurs. And that's really not good. You're not supposed to learn to use your right arm and right hand until you understand how to use your left, how to use your body. Remember the right arm, like I say, from a helicopter, it's just a small propeller. It controls the spin and the release. So let's talk about the right arm now. The right arm, when you hit a rip, it does this. There's a rotation here. If you hit a block, you have a swing at block, it does this. I'm going to do it very slowly. And if you have a cut, chances are you're holding on to it. You're holding on to it. Now, why is not good to learn with the right arm is because, remember everybody, on the downswing, this right arm is actually what? It's passive. This elbow, we talked about how there's energy creation, energy production with the body, and there's energy absorption, which is the lag, and then there's energy release. But as an amateur or as a beginner, if you're already thinking about using your right arm, chance are you're not going to have what? A energy absorption, which is the lag. Chance are most amateurs, what you do, you tend to strain the arms or go out or hold it, hold it. Those are all bad. And the truth is when, you know, a lot of you say, well, what about if I did hitting a cut? Remember, hitting a cut is a third stage if you know how to control a cut. But a lot of people say, well, I try to hit, I'm, I'm, my, my go to shot is a fade. That's fine, but doesn't mean you're on the third stage, what I call the spin and trajectory control. You just have a shot pattern. Okay, so understanding, do not learn most really until you tell yourself, I'm at a spin and trajectory control stage. You should not learn to use your right arm because your right arm, you should be, what your right arm should do is that you should stay connected with the grip and relax, relax the shoulders and work on understanding lagging, which is the energy absorption, right? 
Because remember, on the downswing, this energy absorption movement, the lang, it'll make your elbow, that's kind of, it's bam when you threw this area, and then it's going to extend through the ball here. So the full extension of your right arm is really after the ball, not right at the ball. Okay? And that's the reason why we don't tell, I would never tell any of my clients and students hit down on the ball. There's no such thing as hitting down on the ball. If you hit down on the ball, chances are you're extending your trail on way too early. There's no down force in a golf swing. There's centrifugal force, centripetal resistance. There's no down force. And as crazy as it sounds, I know a lot of you go to a PGA tournament, you see tour players, they were, they were I don't like to use the word hit, they would strike through the ball with, a, with the right arm. And a lot of times they actually do it like this. And their right arm is actually extending a lot earlier than in the actual golf swing. But then when they have a golf swing, when they have, when it's actually playing, the right arm's here. And if you ask them, hey, why do you do that? They say, oh, I'm working on my right arm. Uh, no, you're not. You, you're just doing something, but you don't know why you do it. It's because you can get away with it. It's because most tour players, when you started playing golf very young, you have a recognition of what I call the center movement. Like I say, I didn't play golf until I was 19. And now I understand. I actually tell people that I'm striking through the ball with my hips and my core. My arms just feel like there's a release movement. So I have an image of this release depending on what type of shot pattern or spin I want to swing. So that's the reason why a lot of times what's happening and what's real for a tour player, they can't make that connection. And they will tell you, oh, I trained that. But I don't think you can benefit from it is because most amateurs, you haven't trained your correct energy correctly or you have not harnessed your correct energy. So by doing that single let right arm movement isn't going to help you because the right arm movement is, like I say, it's just a release movement. Okay. So um, be very careful. That's the reason why a lot of times if you're getting tips from a tour player or good players, really try to understand Again, there's three stages of learning golf. Power struggle stage. Speed and distance control stage. And spin and trajectory stage. All right? So that's the right arm release. Understanding what your right arm is doing is so important. But most importantly, this right arm is passive from a learning golf perspective. When you learn golf, you got to learn what's the diff what is important between the left arm release that's what you need to learn. Once you understand that, then you can learn the right. And then eventually you can put them together, which is why I call it, a, you can call the all-wheel drive. It means you have both arms and hands working together. All right? So, for example, a, um, on a tour play, uh, Jordan Spieth, he's a 100% right arm releaser. 100%. Okay? And... Dustin Johnson, he is a, what I call the unification, means all-wheel drive. He has, there's a holding pattern here. So, he hits a lot of those, what I call, you know, Faye, of course, you all know that. But he hits a lot of what I call the block spin, right? And, of course, Tiger, he likes to hit a lot of face shots. So, he uses his right arm a lot, but he also knows how to use his left to promote a unification of a release, all right? So ask yourself, are you a right-hand releaser or left-hand releaser? Are you both? Or what you need to work on? What is more important in your game right now? Do you have a power struggle? Or do you have a hard time controlling distance and speed and distance? And once you cover all of that, then we can talk about spin and trajectory control, all right? So uh, let me see if I miss anything. So today, I really just want to make sure to lay it out to make sure everybody understanding, oh, there's left arm release and there's a right arm release. Left arm is more important than the right and know how to use the left arm. Okay, so um, I hope you enjoy watching this video. If you have any, if you have any comment, leave a comment. If you have any questions, email us. So um, click like and subscribe to our channel. 
by clicking on this button right here and also we have two recommended video if you want to know more about energy first impact later and I will see you next time